Hello and welcome back to Lessons in Attachment. Today I am following on from the last episode where we're going to be talking about why it is that you might not be attracted to people that are secure and available. You might typically call them the nice ones. Um, I don't tend to use that language, but I know that many of the people who listen to this or ask me questions will tend to say that. Now, before we dive in, on the 19th of February, I am starting the next round of Becoming Secure. If you have an insecure attachment, if you feel like you know everything about self-soothing, if you've read all the books on attachment styles, but you can still see yourself falling into the same patterns, then I want you to check out Becoming Secure. There is only going to be a limited number of us because I want you to have the opportunity to get individual support as well from me and from each other. And so the less people means we have more time for that on the live calls um, or in the WhatsApp group that we'll share as well. So I will help you with self-soothing. I will help you with managing your mood and with those intense reactions. So if you know that you need to become more secure in your relationships, in your dating, in yourself, then this is all about repairing the relationship that you have with you using evidence-based tools. So this stuff works. Um, all you will need to do is put in the effort from your side and you'll see the results. I truly believe that. I've had amazing feedback from the other courses so if you are new here, hello, hello, welcome. This is Lessons in Attachment. It's my podcast. I also do put this on YouTube as well for those of you that prefer to watch. And if you have been here before, you're a regular regular listener, then welcome back. It's amazing to have you here and have you in this community. So are you someone who finds yourself attracted to unavailable people, the hot and cold, the back and forth. Then last week I did give some tips on how you can start to change that pattern and become more secure to people, become more secure and attracted um, to the, I don't know what to call them, but you know what I mean. If you're in this, you know what I mean. The people that are available for a long-term relationship. Now, let me just say something in case that comes out wrong. These people are, are available, but it doesn't mean that they are our person. I think that's really, really key. Sometimes we can be like, so I've done all of the work. I met the secure person and even they don't want me. We still have to be a match with the person. OK, so let's look at five reasons that this pattern can develop in us. So firstly, we will struggle to be attracted to people that are secure because it means you will be seen. If you have a core belief about yourself not being good enough that you have picked up throughout your life, then it's very easy to be worried about someone leaving us or never picking us or not, not wanting to stay with us. If we go with someone that is more available, we are going to have to be more vulnerable, be more seen. If someone then leaves and isn't into us, that's going to almost cut even deeper and probably confirm that belief that you have about not being good enough and so what we'll do is we will just avoid that situation altogether we really need to be open to being vulnerable to being seen to knowing that we are good enough whether something works or it doesn't work and putting ourselves in these positions to be seen by someone else it can be uncomfortable. If you have had past relationships, if your earlier years you didn't feel seen, you didn't seem heard or understood and your needs weren't met, it's going to be really difficult to put yourself in that position now. So are you open to being seen? And if you are, you need to start seeing yourself. You need to start seeing your worthiness. You need to start seeing what you bring to the table, sharing who you are with someone and being okay with that, whether this is your person or not. Can you share a bit more of who you are? Guys, the next reason that we get stuck in this pattern is because these relationships where you're seen and where someone's available, they can feel really, really unfamiliar, especially for people with an insecure attachment. There's usually a way that that attachment has been formed. And usually your inner relationship template your inner template of how you see yourself, how you see love 
it has been conditioned usually through chaos and the calmness the predictability that comes with these kinds of relationships they can feel really unfamiliar humans tend to seek what is familiar even if it is not the best thing for you even if it's not bringing you contentment and happiness we tend to stay in a position where we know what to expect. I've been here before. I know this feeling. We will tend to stay there and go out of our comfort zone and experience something new. And so even though this is really uncomfortable and it might not make sense to you, but why would I want to be, not want to be here? But why would I be here just because it's unfamiliar? Nothing can feel worse than this, you might be saying. But you will be surprised when we are human, how much we will seek out patterns that we are familiar with, relationships that we know, that we've been in before, it can be almost unconscious. And bringing this to the forefront, bringing this understanding into our conscious awareness can be a really important step in being able to break this chain. The next, the third reason really can link into reason two. This is about your definition of love. Something that I have introduced to my course, Becoming Secure, is really looking at your definitions, your beliefs that you hold around love and relationships. What you tend to find, especially with people with anxious attachment, which I know many of you are, is that your meaning of love is that high, that drug-like high, the chemistry your definition of love is that, and if you don't feel that, the intensity, the huge highs, then you won't think that this is love. Your definition of what a relationship is may be very different to what is a healthy, secure relationship. So someone that's coming towards you, who's available, maybe leans a bit more towards secure attachment, hopefully, right, then that won't be your definition of love. How can you see this of love if it's never what you've known? This isn't how people have shown you love or how you've witnessed love. So being really clear, not only on that old de definition of love, but also on your new definition. And if you want to look at this together, I will be doing this with you on Becoming Secure. This was a huge part of my own journey. You know that my podcast, you know that the courses I do, is very much inspired as well by evidence-based, but also by my own experience and what's worked. And when I became aware of what I had always seen love as being and my definition of love and how I expected to feel in love, it was a huge breakthrough moment for me. And actually that's when I really started to be able to be like, don't get too blown away by this feeling. Where's the actions? Where's the security? Where is the possibility of this being something long-term if that's what I really want? And by then I really, really did. The next reason you might not be attracted to available people is that it feels too much in your nervous system. This can often be misinterpreted as well as like getting the ick and believing that someone is anxious and they're too much and and I'm going to hurt them and all of these kind of um, thoughts and beliefs that you might have now usually your experience is your experiences of love as we've discussed may have been quite limited may have been quite chaotic it may have well involved some neglect and criticism and when you have someone who is able to see you, who is able to show up to meet your needs, to that will want to see you or stay in touch, because you're not used to that. If you think of the previous examples that I've given, because you're not used to that, this will feel too much for your nervous system. And that is what then feels, we interpret that as the ickiness if it feels too much for us, we're going to lean away from that. We need to start to feel like we can, we have the capacity to experience this kind of relationship, to have the capacity to 
hold and experience the feelings that come with somebody wanting to see you, somebody wanting to call you, somebody wanting to tell you that you're beautiful, all of the things that might feel like too much or they're too keen. And what you'll tell yourself there is, I don't want to hurt them. But to me, that's no good excuse. If they are secure, if they're dating, in fact, even if they're not secure, if they are in this relationship world and they're giving this a go as well, that is theirs to handle. You don't need to take on whether you're going to end up not being interested. If you are in the dating experience together, that is part of the risk. And we don't have to stay in this relationship. It might just be that we go on a couple of dates with this person. We might just be curious about how it's making us feel. We can use that experience to start to normalize what it is that feels too much. Side note, if it is genuinely too much and over the top and it is leaning into that kind of insecure, anxious energy, of course, but just be mindful of whether a normal amount of attention is feeling too much. That's what I would say just having that in your awareness. And lastly, the next reason you may well struggle to be attracted to these relationships, and it's going to sound contradictory to some of the previous uh, points that I've made, but hey, this is attachment. It is very nuanced. It's not a one size fits all. So what you might find sometimes is that because you have a tendency to like think about the person that you like all of the time, because you have that um, tendency for like codependency and to need them, you might find that you actually read into them not being interested and you don't want to risk that abandonment. You don't want to risk that being hurt. You know, if they're not texting you every minute of the day, if they're not thinking about you 24 seven you might well find that you interpret that as someone not being interested. Again, we have to be really mindful of what it is to be secure. And this is why I talk about becoming secure so much, because we need to know how to embody secure attachment and what that looks like. Now, someone who is more secure, they're not going to think about you all of the time. They're not going to put you above anything and everything else all of the time. You're not going to be their top priority all of the time. Now, you might really struggle with that. You might not know what to do with that because I'm giving that much. So why would they not give that much? Because a secure, available partner probably isn't going to give that much and they're going to have boundaries and things like that. So the more secure you become, the more you're actually going to find that attractive and you'll be able to see, okay, that doesn't mean that they're not interested. It doesn't mean that they um, don't like me. It doesn't mean that I'm not good enough. Actually, this is quite balanced. Again, just like the other example, we need to be able to decipher between when that isn't the case, but the more secure you, you become and the more you kind of practice these ways of thinking, you're going to be able to tell that difference. Or, you know, once we get the information that we need in order to be able to tell that difference, that's when we can make a decision. So they are just five reasons. They are only a partial list of why it is that right now you might be struggling to be attracted to a secure, available, nice people, whatever it is, the language that you use. Here's what I would say, as you might have seen through the examples that I've given. The best way to really change this pattern, you can listen to last week's um, podcast as well, but is to work on the relationship with you. Become more secure with yourself. Become more understanding. Stop abandoning yourself, self-commitment. And from there, these things do naturally shift as well. That is something I am so clear on. We change our inner te templates, we change our core beliefs, or at least we work on them, we become aware of them, we um, reduce them, and we rewrite our definitions of love and how we want to feel in love. And this stuff will catch up the outside, who you're attracted to, the relationships that you have, they catch up. Okay. Okay. I hope that you have found that useful. Do follow me on Instagram, carly.ann underscore. That's the best place to contact me, to let me know that you've listened, to let me know what you want me to sort of go into more detail around on the podcast or topics that you're interested in. 
I'm always really keen. I've got such a long list from you guys. I'm always really keen to hear that. So if there's anything that we've spoken about today that you want me to talk more about, just get in touch and I will add that to the list. And, you know, the more that I see of one topic, the more likely I am to do that one sooner. Do check out Becoming Secure. Or if you're not quite there yet, you can check out the Attachment Recovery Gym. There's a whole library of resources there, learning around attachment, abandonment, wounds, self-esteem, and lots of practices and psychological tools that you can use there. Thank you for being here. Please subscribe, do all of the things so that this podcast can get out to the right people. And I will see you right back here soon.